<clears throat> Keith One Time Thurman versus Danny Swift Garcia. Who wins that fight? It's going to take place March 4th, and uh, it's going to be a great fight. Whoever wins the fight, it's going to be a great fight. Uh, <clears throat> you got Danny Garcia. He's undefeated. He uh, pretty much a lot of his career has been at 140, uh, where he took his rise to uh, fame at 140. Keith Thurman, he's been at welterweight so as far as I can remember for most of his uh, well-known professional career. Um, I'm not sure if he was at a lower division before, but he rise to fame in the welterweight division. He's been campaigning at the welterweight division for a long time. Well, whereas Danny Garcia campaigned at the 140 pound. So uh, Keith Thurman is used to the, to the bigger guys. He, uh, he has a harder punch. And he's he's a bigger guy than uh, Danny Garcia. He's he's more he's he's bigger built. He's stronger. Uh, size wise, uh, I'm not sure the the height in the I can actually look that up right now. Uh, the height in the reach differences. Uh, I don't think there is I don't think it's significant. Uh, let me just check right now. Hold on a sec, guys. Um, yeah, so five eight and a half, Danny Garcia, Keith Thurman five seven and a half. This is going to box rec. Sixty nine inch reach for Thurman, sixty eight and a half for uh, Danny Garcia. Yeah, because Danny Garcia looks like a small man in the ring. He kind of looks like, like kind of like Manny Pacquiao's build. He's like that same height, stocky like Manny, but you know probably bulkier than Manny. But anyway. Uh, I'm surprised that, uh, yeah, he's taller than Thurman. Not by much, though. You won't really notice the difference. So physically about the same size, but I think Thurman's just the stronger guy. He's been fighting bigger guys. He's been fighting at the vision way longer. So, and he has a slight reach advantage. But pretty much physical-wise, I would just give, this obviously, the strength to Keith Thurman and the power. He's uh, Keith Thurman, 27-0, never lost. 22 knockouts, 79% KO percentage, pretty much 80%. The only fight I really... He was vulnerable in the Luis Colazo fight where he got hurt with a body shot, and he was really hurt because he was in survival mode when he got hit with that shot. He recovered and won the fight. Uh, but it was, uh, it was definitely a vulnerability there. Other than that, Sean Porter fight was very close. You could have actually said Sean Porter won that fight. But this is top-level competition. Sean Porter is a top-level guy. So uh, it's not like it was a Rod Salka or a, or a Samuel, Vas, uh, Varg Samuel uh, Var Vargas. So. Uh, and Danny Garcia, on the other hand, he's had vulnerabilities too. He looked... Close fight with Robert Guerrero. You could have thought Robert Guerrero won that fight. I remember when I seen it. It's been a while now, but I think Robert Guerrero. Uh, you could, you could uh, argue that Robert Guerrero won that fight. I thought he won actually. I, I remember. Um, uh, who else? Uh, Mauricio Herrera back in 2014 after the Matisse fight. Uh, he lost that fight. There's not. I don't even think you can really dispute that. He. Uh, from what I remember, it wasn't even close. He clearly lost that fight to Herrera. So it, you could say maybe he was coming off the biggest win of his career against Matisse. He was he got maybe too confident, too comfortable. He went in the ring and uh, underestimated uh, Herrera. But and he was fighting in uh, his. Uh, he's obviously he has Puerto Rican background and he was fighting in Puerto Rico. So maybe that had something to do with it too. But if I had to say, I would say Herrera does have an awkward style. He's uh, he's tricky uh, and uh, he's awkward. So, but I think maybe Danny Garcia got too comfortable after the Matisse fight, and uh, he uh, he took Herrera lightly. So, yeah. So and Danny Garcia, 33 and 0, 19 knockouts. 58% KO percentage, about 60%. So he's 
He's not a light puncher, but I don't think he's a hard puncher either. He does, when he does land his punches, you can feel them though. Like when, uh, I, like in his fight that it just took place against Vargas, you could hear the thudding punches when he was throwing them. So, uh, he definitely, he's a boxer puncher. Uh, he's, he's got decent power, but not Keith Thurman power, not one-time power. Uh, he did knock out Khan, but Khan's got a glass chin. He did drop Matisse, but that was more of a uh, beatdown. Hold, hold on a sec, guys. <clears throat> Yeah, the cat is hitting the, the doorknob to wanting in my room. <sighs> anyway, uh, yeah, where was I? Yeah, so he's uh, he's got decent power, Danny Garcia. And so anyway, uh, yeah, so Garcia's biggest win has been against was was against Matisse. Uh, Keith Thurman's biggest win, I would say, is Sean Porter. So. Yeah, it's uh, both guys have fought top level guys. I would say more recently, though, uh, Keith Thurman has fought more top level guys uh, compared to Danny Garcia, who's fought. I'm not like I guess if you take out Rod Salka and Vargas, then it's not actually that bad. He's faced decent guys. Well, Paul Malinaji really is nothing though. That pillow puncher. So. Anyway, uh, March 4th, don't miss it. Keith one time Thurman versus Danny Swift Garcia. I'm going with uh, Keith Thurman on this one. I just think uh, I think the, the power of Keith Thurman, the strength, he's not a Rod Salka, he's not a Lucas Matisse, he's not a Samuel Vargas. He's more patient. He's more tactical, more skill than Lucas Matisse. He thinks more, and uh, he, he's more he's more patient, and he, uh, he he times his punches and he thinks in there. So I'm gonna I'm going with Keith Thurman, and uh, I just don't think Danny Garcia will be able to take the strength and the power of Keith Thurman. Let me know what you guys think, and uh, thanks for watching. Power of Boxing, powering down.